Hello everyone, welcome to Matters. We do have some breaking news today on the program. Uh, the Prime Minister Head of Government uh, has announced that the government will be, has revised certain measures, some of the 20 measures which the government had put in place to fight COVID-19. Most of the measures have been revised and there are new, uh, new issues that will be operational in the country as from now on. And also on today's edition of the program, President Paul Bia special offer of COVID anti-COVID-19 paraphernalia has arrived several regions of the country. But the question of who exactly will benefit from this remains, the, the, uh, it remains a mind-boggling issue on the minds of certain Cameroonians. Our panel will tell you uh, what they think about this issue. And meanwhile, the government of Cameroon says more than 8,000 people who have been on the state's payroll are ghost workers. Their salaries have been suspended pending uh, verification and rectification. Also coming up on the show, why uh, government says, sets June 1st as an indicative date for school resumption in the country, uh, we'll look at the possibility of this happening amid the COVID-19 pandemic. We're broadcasting live from High TV's headquarters here in Boya. I'm Paul Nje and Matters starts right now. A very warm welcome to you wherever you are watching us. Thanks indeed for sharing your Thursday evening with us. In a moment, we'll join our panel to discuss the issues on today's agenda. But first, let's have a look at what the, on the press have been saying, the newspapers have been saying. Now, we'll start with the Median. The Median newspaper has as banner headline, Sovereign Order of Malta, the Grand Master Dies of Incurable Disease. Fra Giacomo della Torre del Tempio di Sanguinetto uh, died, uh, and the, the Median says it's from an incurable disease. The paper says Bia struck, uh, Bia struck hit uh, the road. That's for special COVID-19 gesture. The the median newspaper also asks who chopped money meant for Kumba roads. That's a question the the median is asking. You have to read that paper to get to know exactly who had that money uh, taken. Now COVID-19 PM Diangute sweet talks drivers, hotel owners as government safety measures prove unbearable. Also, tussle for Kumba City top seat. Uh, Greg uh, Mwewanyu sees the Supreme Court as Victor Nkele emerges victorious in uh, Boya Court. And now let's also go. Let's go now right straight away to Cameroon Insider. The paper says a, president, a presidential gesture for COVID-19. Paul Bia reaches out to grassroots. And the, the paper highlights some key uh, issues, saying truckloads of hygienic products and medical uh, kids heading to far flaring uh, locality, far flung localities, I beg your pardon, targeted our poor society forgotten citizens with difficult ac access to treatment. Gifts cost a whopping two billion francs CFA. Now in other COVID-19 news, the uh, Cameroon Insider says, PM says governments uh, considering palliative measures for business sector and 8.8 .8 billion francs so far spent on treatment procurement of hospital equipment, hotel bills for quarantined. And the paper also says in Cote d'Ivoire, presidential candidate slammed 20-year jail term. That's uh, Guillaume Soro who was slammed that jail term. Let's go to the Guardian Post newspaper. And the, pop the paper questions that where is the special status announced for the Northwest and Southwest regions? You might recall that during the major national dialogue, uh, it was uh, d deliberated and and suggested that the two English-speaking regions be given a special status. And up to now, the Guardian Post questions where that is. Uh, Minat Boss issues fresh warning to MRC. Uh, dangles sledgehammer over Camto if party continues to, quote, illegally raise anti-COVID-19 funds. And the paper reports that uh, Archbishop Samuel Cleda boasts his coronavirus herbal cure is 100% effective. You've got to read the Guardian Post newspaper to get that story. And now the creepy deep sea port swells government's uh, coffers with 60 billion francs CFA. And just like other papers, the Guardian Post says, fight against coronavirus, Bia special aid begins arriving regions. We'll certainly talk about that on this edition of the program. And the Horizon, we'll end with the Horizon newspaper, uh, which says, Anglophone crisis, Monsignor Michael Bibi says, no to cosmetic solutions. Uh, and then be a special anti-COVID-19 gift received in regions. That story is being covered by most of the written press. Uh, contractor says uh, running out of funds. Yaoundé Douala 
expressway, the contractors for that project say they are running out of funds. And the paper also reiterates um, Archbishop Samuel Cleda's statement that his COVID-19 cure is very, very effective. And following the Ngarbu massacre report, government spokesperson and communication minister Rene Emmanuel Sadi says the government acted in good faith. Uh, that does it for this edition of the Press Review. We'll take a very short break, and uh, when we come back, we'll meet our panelists to discuss the issues of the day. Stay with us. Thanks for staying with us. If you're just joining us, you're watching Matters here on High TV uh, with me, Ponjo. Like I did mention, there's some breaking news just coming in. The Prime Minister, Head of Government, uh, Joseph Diongute has, uh, pro produce, has pro um, read out a number of new measures, which he says are from the head of state in the country's battle against the coronavirus. Now, certain sectors have been affected uh, by these, uh, since the outbreak of this virus, and the Prime Minister Head of Government has announced a couple of, a couple of changes. You might recall that the government had put in place 20 measures to combat the coronavirus, but uh, now some of those measures have been overturned and revised. And uh, now there's the operation of restaurants over 6 p.m., but with respect of social distancing. So restaurants can, and bars can now operate after 6 p.m., but must obey social distancing. They've lifted the measures on the reduction of passengers for buses and taxis and other transport uh, agencies. And of course, there's been some level of tax, uh, uh, tax suspensions and exonerations for certain companies. Now, let's talk about this with uh, Mr. Sama Abang Mugwa. He's a social commentator. Good evening and welcome to the show. Thank you, Paul. It's a pleasure to have you on. It's mine. We are also here with Dr. Busi Neba. He's an educationist. Uh, it's a pleasure having you on the show tonight. Good evening. Thank you, Mr. Mojito. It's been a while. I've not been here. A lot is going on in our country and the world. A lot of global challenges, and I think that we'll be deliberating on these critical issues that affect human life. Thank right. You very much. Mr. Sama, I want to start with you. You've just gone through, you know, we, we know we got that just before we came on air. We've just, we've just gone through the Prime Minister's new announcement of some measures. What did you make of, of, of it? Um, uh, Paul, they are quite welcome. And it's... Uh, what we have been expecting before now, uh, we call them uh, uh, incentive packages, which we expect uh, the government to have put in place before imposing its injunctions. You can't place injunctions on economic activities. You can't place injunctions on uh, people's social activities. Mm -hmm. You can't place injunctions on uh, people's general way of life and source of livelihood without putting in place those accompanying incentive measures to enable them uh, readjust easily. Yeah. That is one of the reasons why lockdown has not been effective, not only in Cameroon, but in most African countries. Mm -hmm. Because uh, it seems like most Afghan governments, because of lack of economic means, uh, imposed lockdowns, were faced with the threat of the pandemic and rushed into imposing lockdowns, but without thinking of the palliative uh, uh, accompanying incentives that would enable people make necessary adjustments to their lifestyle. It is, I followed. Um, reports from Lagos, Nigeria, where uh, a lady said, if coronavirus does not kill you, hunger virus will kill you. Uh, you can't expect people to cut down on their economic activities, their basic sources of livelihood by more than 50% without enabling them or without providing them with palliatives as to how to cope with the economic and social exigencies of life. Mm -hmm. They have to pay rent. They have to, to play in Jangi. They have to pay hospital bills. They have to, to get foodstuffs. And paradoxically, in our Cameroonian context, uh, we saw an increase in the prices of basic commodities. Either some artificial scarcities were created, but the government, they the ministries of commerce did not accompany people in that light yeah. to check the unscrupulous actions of 
investors and businessmen. So they allow people to create scarcities and, I mean, increase prices uh, on the pretext that they too were like equally spending uh, too much. So I think that the measures taken by the government, I'm sure we shall be able to have time to elaborate on a few. Uh, I heard the government say that bars, that restaurants and bars can stay open yeah, beyond I six. To, to ask you. But it didn't touch on churches and our places of worship. <laughs> it did not tell us whether churches can also operate beyond 50 members because uh, I'm sure the first uh, 13 commandments of Diongute uh, specify that churches should ensure that they don't group together more than 50 members. Mm -hmm. And they were even encouraged to stop churches. That's why so many churches resorted to video evangelism. But, but, but this, this does not say 50, more than 50 people could be, could be in a restaurant. It just says they can operate over 6 p.m. That is why I'm saying that. That's why I'm saying that it is a sort of it is a sort of bias in that direction okay. because it, it favors social life and yeah. economic life, but without looking at the religious aspect. I am happy it. There are so many exonerations as far as taxes and uh, fiscal uh, exigencies vis-a-vis -vis the state. Social insurance payments, uh, suspension of the payment of land taxes, all of those. I expected this communicate to go further yeah. to either suspend or eliminate payment of electricity bills and even water bills. Those are basic uh, utilities that we need for livelihood i expected them to have pumped in much money into that direction and another area that has been neglected or omitted is reduction in fuel prices once you reduce fuel prices the ripple effects mm -hmm. touch every other sector but of the they economy have, they have increased they have said they have they are lifting the, the the restriction on the number of passengers this means the price of fuel does not need they don't need it doesn't need to affect the, the taxi drivers again because they'll have the normal passengers they no i don't think so i don't think so it would have been been a further measure okay. to make life easy because if you significantly reduce the price of fuel at the filling station mm -hmm. uh means of transportation will be easy right. and people will pay less for transportation that would translate into the price of basic commodities okay. importers transporters who transport those commodities uh, who spend less and so they will not tax us more. All right. Those were the incentives, some extras that are expected, but which were ignored. Okay. But again, for once, I hailed the government for that move. All right. Dr. Busi Neba, you've gone through some of these measures. What did you make of the new uh, decision of, from the government? Uh, Paul, I think that uh, such dreadful pandemics the government was not prepared for it. Okay. And psychologically, you understand that the government needs to work and observe what is going on in other countries and what is happening in our country. Uh, psychologically, the government have to look at therapies that can help solve this, uh, this problem. Yeah. And I think that the government works things critically. The government is not in the haste. So you have to observe the number of persons as the days go by who have the pandemic, mm -hmm. the number of persons who have died, and you have to observe the economic, the social activities. They've certainly done some of that, but let's, as, let's, as, let's, let's get into, into the context of the, the government's release. Yes. They have said the restaurants can operate beyond 6 p.m. They have lifted the measure, reducing the number of passengers, and yes. they are uh, encouraging social distancing. But in a typical taxi scenario where you could find five, six people in one taxi, how can social distancing come into play here? Uh, for me, I don't think, I think that the government is fast as for me. Okay. Uh, I think that the issue of social distance when it, con when it concerns COVID-19 is very important. Mm -hmm. And that is what is happening in the U.S. today. You see many governors want to open their, their own states and they want to, their restaurants to be open, like in the United States. Yeah. And Donald Trump is even refusing. And I think that psychologically with us, we D need... D a Donald Trump is instead encouraging. Uh, Donald Trump... We, Don should, we should stress that. He's encouraging businesses to open. He says he wants the economy to thrive. But so, that's some, go some, go day, some governors don't want that. So what I'm saying here in the context of Cameroon, what I feel is that uh, the issue of social distance is still very important because when you look at the pandem uh, pandemic, especially in Yaoundé, 
uh, it is increasing in a geometric progression and that is why the who donated some cars and other issues to see that uh, this pandemic could, could be reduced as for okay. the restaurants as for the bars we need a lot of sensitization we need a lot of education on this mm -hmm. and i feel that uh, to me personally it is not a very good gesture for bars to be for bars and restaurants and uh, the number of passengers to be increased psychologically for me for now because i think that the the, the disease the, the the pandemic is still in an alarming rate and on the, on daily basis we can see that the, the number of persons who have this disease is increasing so we have to look for safety measures and psychologically we need a lot of psychosocial therapies at such moment mm -hmm. and when you look at such measures you, you understand that we need these psychosocial therapies in terms of stimulus response because the government is bringing a perspective here of uh, person, uh, uh, opening, bars after, opening bars after 6 p.m. Yeah. And you understand that our population needs a lot of education to respect these measures because if you look at the issue of face masks, many people are not still respecting it. On the street, you see people not even putting on the face masks, and they are still and they are still moving up and down, and they are just they are not putting on the face mask the way they are supposed to put. Yeah. So, if you say that bars should open after after 6 p.m., you see the number of persons who will be at, going to the bars, and it is disadvantage. The negation for that is not the best. Before I think that we still need to look for other measures to solve this pandemic. Is so. Before I get to Mr. Summer, uh, bars. As at this time, certain certain business places before now have been operating even after 6 p.m. If you go through down through Moliko after 8 p.m., you still see some of those places open. And in areas like Bumaka, there's a bar which at 10 p.m. you still find music coming out from there, people dancing and so on. Uh, to them, this is no new move, is it? No, to, we, we 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 must always respect government measures. It's very important for us to respect government measures. If you look at it critically. There are persons who are not respecting the measures as imposed by the government. I still feel that psychologically, this pandemic, the, the rate of this pandemic is is drastic. So we need to respect the issue of social distance at the at the moment to observe what is happening in our community. Okay, M Mr. Sama, you you are itching to say something? Yes, I, 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 in as much as I hail the the government for the. Uh, 19 new commandments. But permit me say that uh, government's decision to put in place, to like put back in place, uh, to uplift the suspension of uh, uh, E3s and uh, of licenses, to me is uh, misplaced because uh, it gives it gives the ordinary Cameroonian the impression that uh, this thing is a is a playable matter. Uh, it takes away the seriousness element. It takes away the 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 dreadful uh, ingredient uh, in the fight. I expected government to have to have done again, as I said. Focus on those things that have to do with people's livelihood. Yeah. I don't necessarily need a restaurant. For, for society to function. We don't really need an off license for society to function. I expected those accompanying measures, again, as I said, focus on those things that have to do with the economic survival of the general society. Yes. Let the bars function, wouldn't they be? Yeah. We'll get, uh, if you have looked at the the dynamics of drinking sports in this country. They pull a mammoth crowd more uh, in the evenings and in the later part of the days when people are through from work. You instead encourage them that they should operate beyond six. I would have applauded more an effort where you say the restriction of, on, of licenses yes. should be modified, especially given the drastic one that was taken by the governor of the Southwest region, mm -hmm. who said they are no more on licenses, but off licenses. Yes. So you buy and take home. Mm -hmm. We could allow people buy and consume on the spot, but please close by 6 p.m. Yeah. All other measures that government has taken, again, as I said, are uh, I would applaud them and regret the simple fact that many more, as I have 
outlined mm -hmm. were not taken into consideration. As I said, uh, the issue of electricity bills and water bills and reduction of uh, uh, fuel prices and and a few others. But I think that in the days ahead, if these measures are implemented, honestly, genuinely, in good faith, uh, they will definitely go a long way in ameliorating the conditions of life of people who whose economic uh, activities have been greatly curtailed. All right. We've just been joined in the studio by Mr. Njumo Cyril. He's a, an analyst and, of course, a CRM militant. Welcome to the program. Thanks, Paul. It's yeah. a pleasure to be here. So just before we came on air, there was some breaking news of the, minister, the prime minister's decision to lift some of the restrictions placed on certain sectors of the country owing to the COVID-19 pandemic. And a number of them was to the, uh, that restaurants could now operate over 6 p.m., uh, restaurants and bars. Then they lifted the measures of uh, re reducing the number of passengers in, the taxi, in taxis and buses so they can now have their normal passengers. And of course, there's the suspension of taxes or an exoneration of taxes of certain companies. W what do you make of this? What I make of it is that the whole world now know that uh, Mr. Bia and his team were not able <laughs> to provide basic needs to Cameroonians. Uh, the hasting decision to halt some of this measure uh, to limit social uh, coherence is just, uh, uh, it's like a false measure, it's like a false response that is coming from the streets. I want to take the case of taxi driver. It, it is not, uh, you, you do not miss the point that Taxi, uh, I mean, uh, uh, transporters for some time now have been on air uh, with various uh, grievances at the Ministry of Transport until they had to uh, bring in some fake uh, trade, trade union to, 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 to weaken the initial uh, resistance that was there. So. Going by this fact, you can see that the government was the government has, has been forced to take this measure. And I will not be naive to tell you that when you hear a report from France, for example, France has made a prediction that by the 15th of May, they are going to uplift most of this measure. So Cameroon being uh, one of the, the headquarters, I mean one of the, the, the local community of France, which is the, our, our capital, Actually, we are just following, we are just a uh, 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 That is, Why would we you are call just Cameroon a local community of France. We Cameroon, are the government says Cameroon is a sovereign country. We are emulating what is happening in the European countries. I, I will back my facts. Very quickly, we, yes, we, we have to discuss that. Of other course, issues. I'm always very fast. Mr. Paul Atanganji yesterday went on the street that he's going to share social amenities to the people. That, uh, that is, is uh, responding to the two billion francs coughed out by the President of the Republic to bring humanitarian assistance to the people as a, as a measure of repost to the COVID-19. But when you see the substance of what was brought to the people, you start asking yourself, does this worth two million? The people of Southwest received their own at the governor's office. You just have to see what was the content of it. So they be essentially or exactly will receive some of these things. These are the mind questions that are mind-blowing and mind-boggling to some Cameroonians here. Let's discuss now that, with our, that now with our panel. Mr. Sama, um, the government has already dispatched, or oh, Minister Paul Atanganji's administration, or his ministry has dispatched the president's two billion worth anti-COVID-19 materials to the 10 regions. Um, when you looked at, when you saw images of the things being sent down to the field, what did you make of them? Uh, Paul, you were overtaken by the the 19 uh, new commandments of the John Ngute uh, government that I, I, I basically forgot. Uh, one of the things that caught my attention before I got to your, your studios. Yeah. I want to, to use just 30 minutes of your time to thank the municipal authorities of seconds. Boya, 30 seconds, the municipal authorities of Boya for continuously over the years and even as we speak, maintaining two death traps along the streets of this town. 
There is one death trap at mile 17. Where you leave mile 17, before you get to the, where there are those stores, there, there is a standing pool of water there which has created a, a major gully, a pothole at the center of the route. It has been there for years now and nobody has ever bothered. The next death trap, which is more deadly, is between BGS Moliko and the GCE board, where just because of a, a drainage blockage, whenever it rains torrentially, we have uh, a seed there, we, which has created a major pothole there. I remember years ago, it, it had to take the life of a, an assistant senior divisional officer for Meme at Leongo, around Mount Cameroon Football College Complex, without publicity, for a patchy area there to be rehabilitated. If that young man did not lose his life, that area would not have been patched up, which today now is still beyond repairs. I am sure the municipal authorities of this town want that another life or more lives should be lost at that area, which has always been an accident-prone area around that GCE board for them to swing into action. It needs just for them to, to, to like remove more from that drainage so that, so that runoff water can flow easily. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, that's some sarcasm here. Well, well, the issue of the day. if you say so. Um, I, I wish this thing had another face. The face behind the, the head of state's supposed gesture was not the face of an Atanganji. Because it's a face that has come to be seen by a majority of genuine Cameroonians yeah. as a face that characterizes propaganda a face that characterizes falsehood, a face that characterizes uh, manipulation. Permit me to say so. And I take responsibility for my statement. Okay. I wish it was some other likable face. And that is why too many Cameroonians... Other likable face, like which face? Well, it's... it's I'm, I'm not doing publicity here, though. But, but I think... But just that, tell us who you, th you think could have been in that well, position. Uh, a more likable face than that one. Okay. Yeah. So, so I, I think that one of the reasons why Cameroonians, myself inclusive, uh, do not buy into that gesture is one, the face that stands in front of it, and two, the fact that we do not think, or I do not think, we should play politics with the lives of citizens. Mm -hmm. Okay. That is the same argument that the government, that same minister has used against a political opponent, political rival, CRM that they want to play politics with COVID in order to score political points. But that's the same thing that the government is doing. But this is not in the name of the Again, I have party. Asked. Again, I have asked. Paul, let me learn. Okay. I have asked repeatedly. Why would an honest head of state create a national solidarity fund, order his, order his, his own government to, to like kickstart it with a sum of one billion? Yeah. We do not see that head of state accompanied as in, in my own name, my name and me and my family. I am putting in two billion into that same pot of soup so that everybody takes from there. You create a phantom gift allegedly in, in the name of the head of state, which till today I still doubt. I take responsibility for what I say. Whether the head of state is even aware or whether he's in a position to be aware or whether those things are just done in his name without him knowing. A few days after we hear, I watch on high TV, the president of one of the taxi drivers union of Boya at my 17, distributing cubes of savon to his members, purportedly gifts from the first lady. Yes. <laughs> Do you need a soothsayer to tell you that there is, that is a political game too? That people are using this COVID to score political points for their head of state. Why play politics too with the life of Cameroonians? Why did the head of state? And that is where I have an issue. Mm -hmm. And again, as I told you previously, either the head of state does not even know, or the head of state has been zoomed by those who now manipulate him to act in that way. But which actually, for every right-thinking Cameroonian, is a counterproductive step. 
Because you cannot be stopping others who are doing it for political gains, as you say. But that is the same game that you are playing. But do you appreciate the gesture? I really would have loved, I would have honestly appreciated it if it was done the right way and with the right intention. With the intention of helping Cameroonians because with no... And again, permit me say it loud and clear. I wish there were some other face at the forefront. Not that face. Okay. And again, permit me, Paul. Yes. Let me say that. Um, it's unfortunate that you will have to transport cubes of savon soap from Yaoundé to the far north. I find it difficult to understand the logic behind. At a time when we are the same ones singing the song of decentralization, mm -hmm. where you have to, everything is bought in Yaoundé, and you dispatch trucks to the regions, to the hinterlands. How much shall we have spent at the end of the day to transport ordinary sabon, hand sanitizers, to Bati Bosok division, to subdivisions far removed from their divisional headquarters? Men. Who are we fully? Let me come again. Yeah, quickly, if I get into Without it. really bothering about the little that social media has shown us. Yeah. What is the content of the gift? Where well, they always say, look at the intention behind the giver. Don't look at the uh, at the gift. But we are talking of two billion francs that would have been used much more rationally for better things. And this same government, at a time when we don't even have personnel protective equipment for health workers, at a time when we don't even have the ordinary medical facilities, we go to hire, to hire 14 Prados, comfort vehicles from WHO to, oh, I mean, I mean, from somebody. You are giving No. The story is that WHO comes in to, to take care of logistics, but the government of Cameroon hires those people to give out to personnel. But have you ever, can you know how much it will cost to hire one of those vehicles to pay the? And then for three months, Paul, I think that we keep missing the target and chasing charges. Okay. Unfortunately, uh, that has been the hallmark of this regime. I was thinking that at a time when their own lives are at stake, when they cannot even travel out of this country for medical tourism any longer, they will do the needful so that they equip our hospitals yeah. so that beyond COVID-2019, we will have better facilities as remnants to say, well, thanks for COVID, we are left with these legacies. Okay. But unfortunately, that may not be the case. All right, Dr. Busi, never, you've certainly seen images of these gifts being sent to the divisions and subdivisions, or to the regions for, the, for subsequent uh, transportation to the divisions and subdivisions. What do you make of it? Do you see the gesture as a political uh, move like Mr. Sama does, or do you think it's a genuine gesture from the head of state to his people? Uh -huh. I have a lot of introspection on this. My perception about this is very, very deep psychologically. Because when you look at this gift, I think that this gift would have come earlier enough. Okay. Because the number of persons who have died, more than about more than 40 persons have died, and more than 1,000 persons are infected with this uh, dreadful pandemic. So I think that the head of state would have given these gifts ever before. But now, I want to look at it more. The head of the state is a politician, whether I like it or not. And he has to look at things in his own interest. But I want to feel that humanity is very important and the interest of the people is very, very important. And when you look at this, we need to take care a lot with the physiological needs of the people. The basic needs of the people now is very, very important. Their hygienic needs are very, very important. And I want to look at the Cameroon governance system. We talk of the special status. Is the special status even effect effective? And how are we going to distribute these herd kits to remote areas, especially in the, let me contextualize it in the anglophone areas. In the anglophone areas where things are still turbulent, where people are still dying, where gun battles are still going on, how are we going to trans 
transport with the bad roads that we are having how are we going to transport this herd kit to the common man because i feel that the common man needs this uh, this herd kit more than any other person the lay people needs this and when you look at the president of ghana the president of ghana is already having projects of constructing hospitals in this country but if you look at if you go to our subdivisions there are some big there are some subdivisions that have only about two or one district hospitals so we have to be very careful who are those who are going to distribute these kits are uh, these kids look at the numerical the numbers of the people will everyone in the hinterlands be able to have these kids when people don't have food to e even eat when people don't have they cannot live a day to day a better life the cost of living is still very high so i feel that uh, there's a lot of psychological dissonance in our governance system in this country there's a lot of disbelief whereby there's conflict in the mind and there's no emotional stability cognitive dissonance there's yeah. this dissonance in the mind of people and in the looking at the common man now uh with this dress, dreadful pandemic i feel that uh, a lot has to be be done a lot has to be done and the military people also have to be educated on 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 the way they they they, they treat people on the way on, on their ways yeah. when they meet people with this uh, face mask they're not putting it on they have to educate we need a lot of education now we need a lot of sensitization to educate the common man and the persons who have been sent in the field like past uh, mr sama was saying we need persons that uh, the common man believe in them they have self-esteem in them we need men of integrity now in this country and our health care is not the best and i think i also feel that we also need an eclectic system and when i talk of an eclectic system every politician whether an opposition political party have to everyone has to be engaging to support the common people to support everyone in this dreadful period okay. and i want to end by saying that uh, president uh, uh, the president of the CRA and part uh, most come to also donated some uh, kits some health kits and it was it was denounced by the minister of public health so this is a this is a time that all of us have to work in collaboration we need a kind of cooperative work to solve this to solve this problem and i think that we are living in critical moments and we need to so we should not politicize everything because hurt is very sacosa all right thank you uh, mr jumo Sirio, you are from the opposition crm party no doubt about that and certainly you hardly see anything good in what comes from the government and president paul Bia. but there are those who say that this gesture from the head of state genuinely counts to them because it's worth it at a time like this COVID-19 at the COVID-19 period like this when the country is grappling with how to come uh, overcome uh, this disease don't you think this is a very good move forget about the significance don't you think it's a good move if i say yes even the televiewers will be surprised you know we cannot keep using people as stoosh today as we talk Kamto went to the ministry of public health with over 10,000 face mark and other uh, hydroalcoholic product to help Cameroonian, but the minister is nowhere to be found. They are running away from the gift. Over oh, 70,000, over 17,000 euro has been collected by well wishers to support the the the, 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 the survivor Cameroon project that Kamto launched some three weeks ago, but. When you see all the things that have been produced and they are taking it to the minister to help dissipate in the country, they are refusing. They don't want to take. And you see that that is the government that is responsible for the people. I want to tell you, no. I also want to use this opportunity. Right Permit me. You want to know whether the gesture of the government has a good intention for the people. Yes. I'm calling on the minister of higher education that we are giving him a number of time to reinstate Abogbala in his position as a lecturer in the University of Boya because we are not a gullible people. It is not at this time, you that you are talking about the, a government that is fearing for its people, it is not at this time that a social activist like Barrister Congo should be demit from his function in the university. The of, of course, of course, they are all they are all they are all related to mal governance. They are all related to bad governance. We are talking about a system that I, I read through all the measures that have been set. You see, again, everything is within the ambit of the law and policies. I have told you that for 37 years, 
The government of Mr. Bia have done everything but pen and paper. Nothing more than that. They pen down very good measures. Most of them copy in, in, in the other communities and try to give you the impression that they have the, the, the good will to assist Kamounia. But it's nothing. How would you say pen Kamounia and paper? Are, are not going to President feel. Paul Bia, uh, according to Mr. Tengani, please just hold on, please, Personally, please, please. please. You, you say the government uh, does things in pen and paper but don't implement on the field. We are just receiving gifts which are said to be from the head of state who said it on paper and is now doing it in action. That's a wrong statement to use, isn't you it? You have the responsibility to bear your words. I want to ask you, though I'm not the one asking questions on this platform, have you received even a face mark from anybody you just said in this government? You're not in charge of the Thank you. I was just using that illustration to tell you that I sit here. I am engaged in so many front lines. Definitely not uh, washing hands and other things. I'm advocating in various platforms and I receive hundreds of young people per day to chat way forward about their challenges. And what I can tell you is an evidence-based statement that few Cameroonians have benefited from whatsoever has been pumped out on media. It's only good for TV and other gumbo. The, the layman on the street does the taxi that I took while coming here. He was testifying to me that they have been singing 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 then he has not watched on us on air decrying that the layman is not having any of this face mark hydroalcoholic products even the education that is being broadcasted on air nothing has been done that it should reach quack -qua, it should reach remote areas nothing we of which we caught on the state media that the note that are produced in yaoundé for example and broadcasted over the national station could also be transported eh, to this local community since they are already prepared. If we say there's no electricity in the remote area to prepare this not equal and broadcasted in their own local uh, community radio. But this has not been done. As we talk, you want to meet most of these government officials and make them judicial proposal. All they tell you is that they don't have money. Okay. Uh, Mr. Sama, some, some say that the president's gesture is a welcome idea, yes, but what he's offering is not sufficient enough. Uh, One million five hundred um, face masks and over 40,000 cartons of savon, of soap, let me say that. Uh, there are buckets, there are test kits. Some say that more, this money should have been invested in the purchase of test kits so that effective testing could have been done on Cameroonians who have not yet been tested. Where do you stand on that? Let me take you to neighboring Nigeria. They have what they call fuel subsidies, where the state goes into its treasury and subsidizes the petrol producing sector, uh, the, the refineries. Once subsidies are put in place, the, the trickle-down effect gets to everybody. It gets down to everybody. Uh, uh, taxi fare reduces, Okada fare reduces, uh, Kekena pep reduces, yeah. even the price of basic commodities. Mm -hmm. Because one of the reasons why we still pay high prices at our shelves to buy a packet of sugar, for example, is the cost of transportation from Douala or from uh, Banjo, wherever, to, to my village. And once you pump down subsidies into fuel prices, it affects everybody. That's why if you look at the question that you have there, Bia's anti-COVID-19 paraphernalia arrive uh, regions, who benefits? That already indicates to you that there is, there is going to be the element of subjectivity and bias. Not only subjectivity and bias, but insufficiency. How many cartons of soap have been sent to the southwest? How many shall be sent to the six regions? How many shall go to all the subdivisions? And how many shall go to over 500 villages? And how many shall go to the more than 5,000 families, households? How many households are there in the southwest? How would the gifts be distributed so that the ordinary man feels the impact? In as much as it is insufficient, lastly, I mean, lastly insufficient, nobody expects the head of state to buy savon for 20, 
25 million Cameroonians. Nobody expects him to buy uh, wash hand buckets for 25 million Cameroonians. But but, people say that he should rather buy more test kits. That is why we expect. Take this as a golden opportunity. Take the take the dark clouds that have been brought in by COVID and see the silver lining beyond. Yes. What legacy shall we leave behind? Not only in our health uh, yes. sector, even in our business sector. Because this would have been an opportunity for us to promote e-business, e-business, e-learning, e-commerce, e-banking, mm -hmm. so that you ask people to stay at home because we have put in place the technological know-how, thanks to COVID, for people to do businesses from home. Yes. For people to even purchase groceries from the stores from home. That should have been the things we expect government to invest in. For the moment, do fuel subsidies. Do you know that as we speak, government has not yet fixed the price on hand sanitizers. Nobody controls the market. To know the quality of sanitizer that is in the market, nobody even fixes the price. Nobody even bothers to know how much it is sold. Yes. That is the basic that the ordinary man needs. Take that two billion francs and tell Kamwata, we are paying up, we are upsetting your bills for three months. Don't ask bills from anybody. Tell, tell Snake, I mean, uh, uh, a new, because we want people to be at home, we also want them to feel comfortable while at home so that they don't feel the urge of going out. Make sure there is power supply 24 on 24 for the next three months. Yes. This is what we are doing. That's what we call subsidizing the economy. As long as you do not do that, and you go into, to, and you, and you like resort into selective and, and, and these picking measures, yes. which are intended to, oh, uh, to, to like give you a political plus to your name as a politician, rather than solve the problem as it is supposed to be. Mm -hmm. Uh, 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 Paul, I will not only say that materially the gifts are insufficient, but I think that the procedure of coming up with this choice of gift was motivated by bad fit okay. rather than a poor judgment of choice, but bad fit. Again, as I said, by the end of this thing, by the end of this exercise, you do a survey and ask how many Cameroonians, how many cubes of sabon did you have? How many cubes of this did you have? Yes. How many households benefited from the buckets? I think at the end of the day, we are missing the point and shooting the shadow. Okay. Dr. Bush. It is not just a waste of time. Yes. It's a waste of resources and a poorly state managed uh, affair that the ordinary Cameroonian will still just take by well. Uh, we are used to this. All right. Uh, Dr. Busi, there are many Cameroonians who say that the President of the Republic, despite this uh, offer, still needs to address them on the state of COVID-19 in the country. That just sending this gift doesn't really match up with him addressing them personally. What do you think? True. Psychologically, people need psychosocial support in moments like this. People need People need to be relieved. I think that the president of the republic in moments like this is a counselor. And the president needs to calm down the, the fear, the emotions, the anxiety, the nervousness, and the mental disbalance in the mind of the people. Because when the president speaks, it calms down the nerves of the people and the people have that sense of belongingness. The people have that confidence. Yes. And it keeps the people moving into their life trajectories. So what we are saying here is that uh, all, when you look at other countries, in the other countries, their presidents are coming out and giving out statistics and also calming down the emotions and the psychosocial dissonance of their people. Yes. So I feel that 
it was very important for His Excellency President Bia to come out and talk to the people and be their self-esteem in moments like this. Because in moments like this, in difficult moments like this, you have seen pres the president, president of America come out. You have seen presidents in other African countries in Rwanda. Their president mm -hmm. is out. They are distributing food, commodities to the common man. Yes. So I feel that it is high time our leaders, even our president, also go to the field. We need our president to always go to the field, come out of the unity palace and face the challenges and overcome the challenges. Let the people feel, feel that they belong and they feel that their president cares about them. Because yes. in moments like this, people need, they need, they, they need what we call psychological well-being. Yes. And, and they and, need to be reassured and from and the And psychological well-being can only come from the, from the reassurance of the president. The words of the president is paramount, it's powerful. And I think that if the head of state comes out, he will adjust the mind, he will psychologically adjust the mind of the people to have hope. Mm -hmm. Because we feel that hope is very important. People need mental resilience in, in moments like this. Yes. There are people who have lost their family members with this COVID-19 and that fear factor is there. And you see that as the fear factor is there, the way of life has changed. And people cannot more longer visit their family members, their friends, because of the fear factor. So we need our president to come out and give us hope that there's light at the end of the tunnel. Because in other countries, you see the uh, Paul Kagame coming out and sharing food and sharing com basic commodities to people of his country. So this is we, we see the president of Ghana, we see presidents of other countries giving out statistics of what is happening. It is not only the responsibility of the head of government, uh, the prime minister head of government and the minister of public health. I, okay. I feel that the head of state, President Paul Bia, whom I respect, if he comes back out and talk to the people of Cameroon, whether on TV, he's assuring the people and telling them that there's there is light at the end of the tunnel and this peop and people have been mentally resilient and All people right. will bounce back to these stressors okay. and people will now be able to adapt and change their lifestyle. L let me bring in uh, um, Sanjumo Sirio. Uh, you say, I know this is a good one for you, but I still have to ask you as a CRM militant, you of course will take the opposite side, uh, but the President of the Republic, some say, should address the people instead of giving these gifts because there is some sort of comfort in the president's voice at a time like this when the people are, are of course, di in discomfort. Mm, you, of course, the CRM has cried that the head of state addressed the people. Uh, has anything changed from that view? Do you still think he should address the people? First, uh, Mr. Paul, it's not good we give the impression to our viewers that we are always opposing. Yes. No, far from that. We are playing our role. Okay. We are helping to balance the governance system so that there should not be abuse because of power. That is just what we do. So there was need for that. All right. Secondly, the responsibility of Mr. Bia to take care of Cameroonian, either within doing crisis or not, it is inscribed in our own constitution. And so it is an obligation for him to take care of Cameroonian well, the, 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 the constitution says the guarantor. Okay? So, going by the constitutional rights, we have all the magnanimity to say that Mr. Bia ought, if he does that now, it's late. When we expected him to do that, has passed. And we simply call on Cameroonian that they should take in evidence a, a, an irresponsible head of state together with the. No, please. I don't know when no, no, when no. is more game of, I really of the have to follow up with that. How, how will you please let me follow up? Okay. You said it's already late. Uh, so you mean he shouldn't address the people of again? We don't need his address because you don't need. His we address. long. I'm telling you, you that I'm address. telling you that the action of the minister of public health today has further confined us okay. in the uh, bad faith yes. of the Bia regime to bring lasting peace to Cameroonia. How will you understand on earth that we mobilize resources over 1,000 face marks? I'm telling you, as I'm talking to you, there are still people on the street moving with paper and rubber that they have tied on their face because they don't have face marks. And the police keep, and that is an opportunity for me to talk about the, the men in uniform. 
most of times we appreciate the wonderful job that they do to cater for peace and security around but again we are so frustrated with the the, the consistent uh, the consistent intimidation they are installing in the mind of the people most of the time today on the streets you don't see people with their face mask covering their That's nose and their mouth yeah. it has become now but uh, uh, a kind of identity cast a kind of identify a, 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 a kind of coloration just to show that you also you are keeping to the law it's not supposed to be like that we are talking about the health system we are talking about something that are harvest life in so many other countries including italy and most of the developed countries in the world and the u.s okay. and so it's not a foul play it's not something that we should job with and when the men in uniform position themselves as soldiers on people they rather send a different message and people now are using the face mark for the wrong purpose it was necessary for me to reinstate that fact so that their leaders, their commanders are listening to us to seize this opportunity to call their men to order. Right. But the question you ask me, you really permit me, very I've used only five seconds. You, you defected from permit the question, me to, very briefly. Give me six seconds. What I want to say to Mr. Bia Paul and the team is that now the figures is rising to 61 from the latest statistics I just had. From 42 years raised to 61. And it's been announced that by ending May, Cameroonian, if care is not taken, we are going to cross over 200 person deaths out of COVID-19. Statistics from where? Young man, there are statistics everywhere. No, okay? Let's know the, the source of your statistics. There are statistics everywhere. But what's the source of yours? The statistic we are using is the statistic from WHO. The, Af the African, the African, when you go, I'm, I'm, I have to have studied some development, some development uh, studies. When you make projections, from the period that people started dying out of COVID-19 to now, to the projection that uh, is being estimated by WHO to see the when uh, people will start uh, when 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 the 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 uh, um, contamination will start sloping down, you can you can possibly make prediction that if this number of people have died between this period, out of these characteristics, then by this period of time if care is not taken but that was a prediction i did not say that would that's effectively what will happen okay so it your is six, your six seconds are it, up Four it more is seconds. it is more than urgent mr yes. paul to be more serious on a frank note to say that the government should still bring the humanitarian assistance to the people what mr bia atanganji and the other are doing mm -hmm. is nothing but a foul play it's only benefiting the same families the people on the streets that are going to suffer and perish out of this disease are sit there waiting for their help. Okay, uh, Mr. Sama, you have the last word on this topic before we go to the next one. Uh, we, we spoke about the president's need to address the the country and essentially how effective it will this give to be on the people. The president's obligation to communicate with the with his people cannot be overemphasized. Again, uh, let me join my my voice to that of uh, Cyril by saying that but that is no longer the priority for uh, Cameroonians at the moment. We have crossed that stage already. Even if he does now, it will be a non-event. And I think Cameroonians are not, uh, Cameroonians cannot continue to be zombified. And that uh, people will take that as, as, as an uh, issue of interest. The ordinary Cameroonian is more or less now concerned with his survival and his livelihood yeah. more than uh, some uh, some uh, outlived presidential address, which will not be different from the addresses we have had for the past 38 years. But permit me add my voice again to mm -hmm. quickly before we go to, to the Paul. In as much as he, uh, I mean, to Cyril. In as much as his uh, choice of adjective might have sounded offensive, but how do you refer to a person who steals? A thief, right? How do you refer to somebody who who engages in uh, immoral activities? You say the person is immoral. How do you therefore uh, refer to somebody who does not perform responsible um, um, uh, um, uh, responsible behavior? He is immoral. And, uh, and it is in that light that I, I might go further to qualify to say the head of state and his uh, collaborators have been 
to a very large extent, politically irresponsible. Okay, now to I might not just say the irresponsible head of state, but I'll think that strategically irresponsible and politically irresponsible okay. in their choice of actions as far as the, the handling of this uh, pandemic is uh, uh, concerned. Conclude with the effectiveness on the gifts to the, of the gifts to the people or on the people. It's, 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 it's given again. Let me go back to the face. Yeah, we're out that of time for the but just go ahead here. very quickly. It would simply just be another maneuver to enrich some people within his circle who would steal, who would embezzle, who would share on the basis of lines of political uh, affinities. It is, it is, I don't foresee any effectiveness on the fight against COVID as far as the way of life and the livelihood of the ordinary Cameroonian uh, is, uh, uh, is um, uh, concerned. Okay. As I said, the best way to have done this, subsidize the economy, and the trickle effect will be felt down to the person in the most remote village. All right, thank you so much. Uh, to you, our viewers, do stick around. We'll take a very short break now, and we'll come back. We'll discuss the second issue for the day. Stay with, stay with us. staying with us we do appreciate you being here you're watching matters now uh, more than 8,000 people are, are ghost workers they are receiving uh, salaries from the state's payroll and uh, according to uh, the official government officials uh, these accounts will be suspended pending verification and of course rectification from uh, the said individuals the ministry of administrative uh, reforms has uh, of public service and administrative reforms has sent out contacts for these people to reach out to in order to rectify their situation. But now let's look at uh, how this uh, situation is in the country. You've, you might recall that the issue of ghost workers has been something very recurrent in Cameroon and the government has been putting up several fights to ensure that this kind of scenario ends. Um, Mr. Uh, Dr. Busi Neba, of course you are an educationist and this happens most of the times in educationals in the educational sector, mm -hmm. where so many teachers who probably uh, travel abroad send either send people to replace them or leave the place open and still receive the money. They don't teach, but they still receive the money. What do you make of the government's fight against uh, such ghost workers? I think that uh, the government needs to take harder measures on this. And also, when you look at such issues, you know that first of all we are living in a country where there's hardship. We are living in a very difficult country that the cost of living is so, so high. And I feel that uh, if our lifestyle was better, people would not do like this. If we're living, if we're looking Africa and Cameroon as paradise, our lifestyle would not do, be like this because corruption in this country is a canker worm. When you look at the rate of corruption in Cameroon among our leaders, first of all, look at it. Let's stratify it. The level of corruption, first of all, among state leaders, especially ministers, directors that embezzle money, monies in this country, and most of them are in prison today. And most of those monies are not accountable. They have not given the money back, not to talk of a poor teacher who received 100,000 and 200,000 a month. So we want to say that, uh, first of all, when we talk on good governance, there should be a kind of accountability. And I want to say that uh, it's not a good practice. People, when we talk on nation building, people have to be patriotic. People have to be hardworking. People have to be engaging in nation building and have love for country. So, when I look at it in this perspective, I will say that it is a negative behavior. It is an antisocial behavior. For people to have a job with their government and abandon their job and put other people to work for them. It is not nation building. We, are not, we cannot be a country like that. Looking at it on the side of the government, 
I still feel that the government has to improve on the welfare of Cameroonians. The salaries of most Cameroonians, especially teachers, in the primary school is not the best. You can't, a primary school teacher, government primary school teacher goes to school every day, but receive a hundred thousand. We are not talking about the salary situation, but let's talk about the act itself. The act, yes. I, I just want to tell you something. Okay. So it is the act, the, there's always a cost. Yes. There's always a cost. And this cost has enabled many people to move to other counties. And we are having in brain drain in our county. So what we are saying is that the act, first of all, is an antisocial behavior. Yes. So people should stop and people should have love for their country because we want to build, we don't want to destroy Cameroon. We want to build Cameroon to be a better country. And if we want to build Cameroon to be a better country, we must avoid negative practices, negative aspects of nation building, like embezzlement, like corruption, because these, are corru these practices are corruption. It's, a, it's an act of corruption. So people cannot continue in such activities. And when we look at issues of good governance, People have to be accountable to their government. People have to be engaging. People have to participate in governance. And if you are not participating in governance and you are receiving salary, it is bad. Those are poor societal is that people should not engage. And I still feel that uh, CONAC and CONAC and all the Supreme State Audit should fight against this. Right. These are bad societal is. And if we want to be in Cameroon, we should not be Cameroon by not engaging into our activities. We need to be engaging and we need responsible behavior. Right, let, let me give our viewers a, a, a view of what the situation of ghost workers has been like in Cameroon. Now, in 2006, there were about 45,000 ghost workers who cost the state over 6 billion francs CFA every single month. And in 2015, over 14,000 ghost workers cost the state over 7 billion francs CFA. In 2016, about 11,000 ghost workers, there were about 11,000 ghost workers, and half of the 2,700 work uh, work, workers in the Ministry of Public Service alone were identified as ghost workers. They didn't exist. And in 2017, over 14,000 ghost workers, 2018, 25,000 uh, ghost workers. And at that time, the government intended to recover over uh, recover about 75 billion francs CFA in this issue of ghost workers. And in 2020, now, the count from 2018, now in 2020, we are getting news that over 8,000 people have been identified. Uh, Mr. Anjumo Cyril, I've given you a countdown, a recount of of how this has been from 2006 till now, 2006, 45,000, and just in 2018, 25,000, and now 8,000. Is government winning the fight? No, but uh, there has been a landmark uh, achievement. Permit me, thank you so much for those statistics you have brought and running down from 2006. Uh, my mother is a civil servant. You will really permit me to share some of this story with our viewers. And so, when I was small, I used to accompany her to go and collect her salary. And I always see how the treasurer is asking her to give something. And so it is not by mistake that you pointed there that most of these investments at the level of the, the Ministry of Public uh, service. service. It's not by mistake. They have trick that anybody wants to follow his engagement. The civil servant has so many, all sorts of names. Maybe when Mr. Sama comes in, he's going to point some of those names. And these people, they have systematically put some barriers that before you pass, you have to give something. And I'm telling you that Article 66 of our Constitution. It starts with Mr. Bia because that's the first person who has instituted uh, 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 a, 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 a laissez-faire. Laissez Article 66 of the 1996 Constitution? Yes. On the declaration of assets? Good. If Mr. Bia could declare his assets, every other Cameroonian would be liable to do so, including member of the government. You will no more have members of the government that occupy various positions. This thing was brought over into the National Assembly some year. It raised a lot of dust, because but it has not settled. Fictitious civil servant Coming now. back to fictitious civil servant, it's between you and me. This is not something to start. When I listen sometimes to Dr. Busi, I just cry because it seems as if we are reading the Bible. But, but the character that the government has grown over the years through our educational system can only yield to this kind of food. Even you seated here, including me, but some of us have gone past that level. If you have the opportunity to have five salaries, you will be taking and you will be loving. Take. We are 25 Cameroonians. 
But we know that not up to 1 million Cameroonian. 25 million. 25 million. Oh, uh, 25 25 million. Thank you so much. Not up to 1 million Cameroonian have employment with the government. Do you know so? It means that we do not even employ up to 10%. The government does not even up employ up to 10% of Cameroonian. And come to think that the few that I, was, I should tell you, if you are employed by the government of your country, know that you are privileged. If you know what it means to go this without eating, everybody would like to live and, and have a comfortable home and send his children to school and pay his electricity be on time and pay the TV, radio, and every other thing to have a bit of social facility. Everybody will wish to. But come to believe that over 24 million Cameroonians have to go by their own. It's not easy. So I don't only blame the people who pose that act. I also blame the system that has been orchestrated. If you are still in university, I don't know whether you are still in school or not, but let me tell you, what is the meaning of the 50,000 francs they give you every end of year? What is that mean, money meant for? If you don't have a lab that can help you to transform your skills to capability that can help you to fetch that money overnight, every year they give you 50,000 50, francs, how do you account for that 50,000 francs? Can you really tell me? I have seen students with less than 2.5 GPA collecting that money. What is the purpose of that money if it's not corruption? So do not only see fictitious salary at the level of the state uh, 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 coffers, but also see how the system has been organized in all sectors of the society to paralyze. Because it has an intention, of course. Everybody that collects, even at the, the toll gates, it's a system. Everybody that collects has a percentage that climb until he reached the head of the state. And that's the money that they use. Can you imagine that 1.4 billion was coughed out to celebrate just the eve of uh, New Year? Can you imagine that kind of money was coughed by an individual who refused and allegedly has pumped out 2 billion to help Cameroonians? We are angry. That's another issue. Let, let me bring in Mr. Sama. You are a civil servant and you certainly know the intricacies involved in all of this. But let me get to you. Let me read you a quote from the Minister of Public Service and Administrative Reforms. He says, quote, the disciplinary procedure could only lead to a pay reinstatement in the event of satisfactory results, a warning or dismissal. As for the civil servants who shall not comply with our summons in the operation, they will be dismissed from the state public service for desertion of their post of duty. What do you make of government's strategy to combat ghost workers? Uh, and are you satisfied with it? Paul, permit me say that the phenomenon of ghost workers is, is not only a Cameroonian issue. Uh, there was uh, a French presidential hopeful who had to back out of the race. I've forgotten the name. I, I, I may recall it. Uh, because it was alleged that sometimes in the past when he was the mayor of a particular council in Paris, the wife was collecting salary for no work done. And that should tell you that it's uh, a global phenomenon. Yes. Uh, but let us come to our Cameroonian case. It is, thank God you were able to read to the hearing of our listeners statistics spanning as far back as 2006 flock tweeting at some point it was 45,000 at a time when our civil service workforce was not up to 200 and because as are now uh, the public service or the civil service recruits and pays between 225 and 250,000 Cameroonians every month it 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 within that reach uh, and then at a certain point in time, some 14 years ago, there were 45,000. And now we are still talking of 8,000. I mean, close to above 9,000. Close to 9,000. Yeah. And are we really winning the war? No. But can we have a public service that is void of this, this canker worm? No. It is like we'll be imagining a universe, a human universe without sin. Or without suffering we can only have such perfection uh, extraterrestrial but as far as we are in a human society we would always have such lapses now 
There is something uh, in my readings of tax law, there are two phenomena there. There is tax evasion, which is criminal. You are supposed to pay your tax and you know and you don't pay. And there is tax avoidance, where there is a lapse in the tax code and you take advantage of that lapse and you do not pay. Tax evasion is criminal, but tax avoidance has no criminal uh, responsibility because it is the error of the tax legislator. So you are taking advantage of his error yes. to your benefit. This brings us to the issue of ghost workers. We have those who, who create the situation and take advantage of it. And we have those who take advantage of a bad systemic situation, like the one we have. We have heard them talk about removing ghost workers from the payroll. But we have never heard them talk about punishing those who create the ghost workers and those who cover them. Every ghost worker has a canopy above, above their head. That canopy most immediately is their immediate boss. We have never seen a situation where the principal of a lycée, for example, for a, of a government secondary school is taken to court and his salary is suspended or reduced as punishment for government to recover teachers who are ghosts but who are being covered. Because every, every period, heads of government establishments, principals, deals, uh, service heads, they send periodic reports. And those periodic reports cover the section for personnel situation. And you find heads of establishments who send names of people who are either dead who are in the country but do not work, have abandoned, and those who have traveled. Nothing has ever been said about the, the sanctions on them. Have you ever seen, have you ever read in the papers, you are a man of the press, where a principal is sentenced because Konak and the others were able to prove that he was covering ghost workers. No. You identify a number of them, you expose them from the payroll, and the cycle continues. Because they do this almost every year. But almost we still as we speak, Paul, apart from the, the census of state personnel by Minister of, um, Minister of um, uh, Public State. Service okay. in uh, 2018, which I did, there is an ongoing census for personnel of Ministry of Secondary Education, as we speak, online. It is being done. And so... You may do those census exercises as multiple as you can. But if you do not have the good will to fight corruption, to fight that phenomenon, you end in big. Two years from now, we shall be talking about the same thing. Four years from now, people, uh, if we are still alive, we shall still be talking about the same thing. Mm -hmm. Not because the fight cannot be won effectively, but because there are people in the system. There is a director, a former director in Minfi, Emmanuel Ledoux, who is at Kondengi, because he had more than 200 ghost salary earners that he was collecting, allegedly, we are told, to the tune of 2 billion francs every month. Emmanuel Ledoux should have been a monster to siphon 2 billion francs every 30 days and eat alone. Who were his accomplices? Directors, Chiefs of services, ministers, who are, were benefiting. All right. You find a situation. Let me, let me just you ask me. So, so, a so you ask my, my thinking is the is the is the senior regional officer of Akole well, 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 that well, he's not the one. He's not Emmanuel Ngamba Ledu. Oh, in well, question. There was yes. something Lebu or yeah. Ledu, whatever. But again, that should tell you that those who perpetrate these acts do not act in isolation. Okay. They have accomplices in high places. Let me tell you that each time a minister is appointed, go to the ministries. You will see people who sit in offices, occupying office spaces, who are not recognized by the government. Mm -hmm. By some measure, they come, the minister tells them, Venevoud de Bruyne. <laughs> we had the same situation here when the regional delegation of transport was still around the, the grandstand, mm -hmm. where a notorious delegate brought the boys from his quarter from around Boyatown and they were there every day 
They were there at the premises. They were the ones receiving files and transmitting the files directly to him for kickbacks. That is the same situation we are facing. Where at the end you find some people who unscrupulously find them, I mean, find themselves and their names on the payroll. Abandon the work. They don't work. Some travel. Let me say that there are there is still much to be done. Okay. Is the fight, is the government winning the fight? No. But can they win the fight? Yes. But not an, not an absolute victory. I don't expect a 100% clean payroll. Mm -hmm. But I expect a reasonably, a reasonably high clean payroll where we can talk of the, the where the measure can be as insignificant as possible. Not what we're talking about, 8,000, 9,000. And permit me say that even that number is far less than the number that have not been detected because we have heads of services, principals of schools, uh, 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 commissioners of, uh, and I mean, even chef the battalion of military bases who are covering because at the end of the day, they have a kickback because they do. Okay. They have kickbacks. And think. so the phenomenon continues. If the state were to genuinely want to say we want to fight against this, mm -hmm. pick one of those principals, pick one of those service heads, pick one of those directors who are covering them, those canopies, sanction them, and the message will go loud and strong. People okay. will be more careful. All right. Let me just read a message from one of our viewers who was reacting to our earlier topic. He said, hello, gentlemen, uh, the gentlemen and dear panelists. It seems Cameroonians do no longer have uh, do not longer have a president. This country is a laissez-faire because, as you can see, a minister commanding another minister, like a subordinate in the office. Can you imagine? We appreciate you sending in your comments. We plead that you tell us your name and where you're writing from. But keep the comments coming. We'll keep reading them here in the studio as the program continues. But, um, Mr. Jumo Siriu, uh, there are those who say that, yes, it's impossible for government to completely stop the, the phenomenon of ghost workers because people use different strategies. Uh, but there are those who say for the number to reduce from 20,000, 14,000, now to 8,000, it means government's repost strategy against this phenomenon is working. Of course, I, I earlier already supported that, uh, that this is, and uh, it kicks back when the Minister of Finance, uh, Louis Paul Motaze, came in and launched his government counts project that uh, was a huge success. I, I, I think we should give credit to some identified individual that can can score uh, 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 above the average. But truth be told, as Mr. Samara rightly said, it is an organized system. Yes. yes. An organized system where everybody has kicks back and struggle more to cover his kicks back than what? Because kicks back sometimes can be more than your salary. Not only more by by figures, but it can be multiplied sometimes. So we are talking about a system that people have used now to be paying, to, to be paying the Anjangi, to be to be doing well-specified projects. Mm -hmm. That if you key, you totally eliminate that system, they will lose. And the Minister of Public Service, Joseph Le, Joseph Le has worked tremendously by eliminating the the one. Gishe, Gishe, what they call Gishe Ini, uh, by uh, computerizing it so that through the the internet you can do what they call tele uh, declaration and all those things, even at the level of CNPS. Mm -hmm. In short, most of the government institutions that deals with direct money transaction, they have tried to bring in the help of the internet in a bit yes. to to fight uh, that uh, ghost working system where people unduly collect money that. Uh, they have not worked. I have to ask you this now. Yes. Uh, Mr. Saman made mention that there are these pe the people who do this have backing from several quarters, and he talked about uh, the lack of sanctions or uh, insufficient sanctions. Uh, do you think that at this time, when the country is trying to fight corruption and malpractices in the public service, more needs to be done in terms of sanctioning and punitive measures? Oh, unfortunately, I cannot be a daydreamer. Mr. Bia himself should be sanctioned. Mr. Bias, we should start with him. Why? How has he? Why has he not respected the constitution in the first place? Who knows what Mr. Bia has as wealth? But he's not a ghost worker. He's present. Excuse me, sir. We expected him to prove that he's he's not a ghost worker. Okay. Cameroon was fierce 
with the COVID-19 deadly challenge. Where was he when other heads of state were mounting? We will not do back that. We will not go back to that debate. Yes. Just to show to you that somebody who have chosen to take vacancy at the helm of the office is a ghost worker, okay. and we should start with him. So if we are declaring 8,000, we are not including him, you, you can understand with me that there's a problem with the statistics. Let's go back to the drawing board and check. And I'm telling you, it's not just about appearance. I will, I will tell you a story that will amaze you. There's this, um, there's this one of my friends that is a teacher with the government, well, because of uh, some personal reason. I might not give the, the total declination, but she tells me that every Tuesday they go to the Ministry of Secondary Education to sign their names since there were teachers in, in community that were hit hard by the, the Anglophone crisis. I was going to come to that, but go ahead. And so for the past three years, they have been going and signing their name and coming back. So I look at her pitifully and, and that is just what she does. I mean, she will go and sign this week, next week she waits. How do you call those kind of people? Yeah, it is the responsibility of the government, again, that during crisis, they create emerging classes because as the line resource, the line resources are there, wasted, the students that were supposed to be in classroom are picking guns, some are, 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 are getting into vulnerable traits, and before you know it, it is a whole country insecurity, I mean security situation that is put at danger. So I'm telling you that it is because at the head of the state we have a president who is very negligent. We have a president whose 37 years of mandate has one characteristic, laissez-faire. Like the, what they call to the answer administrative has killed the, the country. And so in that 8,000, that is what you have been able to identify. What of those who are unproductive? We don't have a system where they go and check on these people and check whether they marry the money that they, they take from the government. We have people who put who, cases of doctors has been reported over and over. Doctors that desert their hospital where they are posted to work and they find themselves in private clinic. Teachers that desert their post and they are doing their gumbo in, in private school. Do you want me to be listing you the list? There are so many. We should not just limit at the level of those who have traveled abroad. Okay. We should also go and punish those who are there and are not productive. All right, Dr. Busi, before I get to Mr. Sama, uh, here's what Minister Joseph Le said again, quote, we only need to pay deserving workers. Do you agree? Yeah, I agree with that. <laughs> if you're not working, why should you be paid? I think that I earlier said here that people need responsible behavior, whether we like it or not. You cannot build a country with irresponsible behavior. And I feel that also Joseph Lee should think about a computerized system. We need a computerized system. Our universities are there. There are students who have done technology in the university. I think that they can exercise their productive skills in such venture. Because what I hear in Cameroon is that the educational system, if we're not careful, is becoming porous. And if we allow our education system to be porous, it will, not, it will also affect the system. The system also become porous. So what I'm saying is that we need also a system where we can shape back our educational system, shape back our curriculum in such a way that students from the university doing uh, uh, technology, after their graduation, they can come out also and look for technological means in which not only imported technological means, look for in a technological means in which we can curb all these uh, sort of malpractices in so, our so country. Essentially, just tell us so your strategy. How, how will the technology curb ghost working? There are softwares that can work on this, okay. and other countries are practicing that. You don't even need to do things with papers. Count, there are countries that function without papers Rwanda. today. We have to be very careful. We have to be very innovative. Children are creative. There are students who are creative. We have to be innovative. So. What thing that is killing Cameroon is the paperwork. Okay. I want to tell you, my, 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 my father was a military man. He died several years ago, up to today in this country. We have, we have gone out, we have followed his books to today. Nothing is out and saving the country. So we are saying that there's a lot of bottleneck in this country. We have to bring in a system that is open. And when the system is open, everything will be open. We should not blame only the president of the republic. Right. It's not only the president of the republic that runs the country. They are, they are, they, they, the, the country functions it as a, a system. Mm -hmm. There's what we call the separation of power. If we put in laws, oh. if we put in laws in this country, we have strong institutions. 
where we put in laws for checks and balances, all these things will not. It's because our law. We need to revise our laws in parliament in this country. All right, Mr. Sama, you, you have checks and balances. Just say before we go to the next issue. I think that uh, we we may waste our time here uh, hailing the uh, the Minister of uh, Public Service for the plus eight thousand suspected ghost workers. Uh, but I think that the actual figures that we have on the ground are far beyond that. Uh, let me tell you, and to corroborate what uh, uh, Cyril said earlier, all of this emanates not just from corruption, but from initia, the lack of a proper governance system, the absence of a proper uh, mechanism to govern the public service in terms of numbers in terms of career profile you don't even know uh, who is where who is supposed to be where at what point uh, you would imagine that you find a young man who just starts working now is at the age of 23 and you, and you look at his pay slip and he's benefiting from family allowance for seven children eight children and nobody cares nobody cares so it goes beyond people being ghosts, but people taking benefits that they are not due. Yes. And the system allows it. The system allows it because there is a network of chains and benefits where so many people lead the salt. And there are the same people. Let me share this anecdote with you, Paul, before we, uh, will I skip fences. Yes. I have a colleague, a friend who was in the Ministry of Finance, uh, Department of uh, Treasury. And innovation was to be introduced, a software innovation to check uh, corruption within that system. And an expert was brought in from Martin France. His boss, who is the director, sent him to go and represent him and learn. Five days. They were paid huge. Huge pay gap. He went there, learned, came back with all the, I mean, with, with, with every mechanism to, to check fraud at the level of execution of uh, of um, uh, state budget. He came back and had to, to like also teach his boss. He showed his boss, you can block here, they will not come out here, you can block here, and showed him all the outlets and how they could be checked. And you know what the boss asked him? If we block here, can the two of us open <laughs> without them knowing? And we move our own? <laughs> so you can understand it. Such that the same people who come on air and make noise that government has identified 9,000 ghost workers, will be the same people to put in those ghost workers, either because they are their they are relations, they are friends, or they are political clients. Those are the things that happen. I think that it is not just a matter of identifying 9,000. Let us go further, and if we do it effectively, genuinely, in good faith, we would, un we would uncover more than this. I have a colleague who left this country in 2008. I was in 20, September 2018 that his salary was stopped. Okay. He did not ever do any census. And he told me, Sama, I will, I will continue collecting. My family will continue collecting until the day they discover it and they stop it on their own accord. But that I will go and declare to them that I am no more, never. And his family continue collecting for 10 years. For 10 good years, imagine 250,000 francs per month times 10 years. But that is the system that we are in. And it is a system that is oiled by the same big barons who come out to decry it. The, the state knows very well what they can do to, to like take down this number to the barest minimum. Okay. We cannot have a zero ghost worker situation, but we can have a situation which is cleaner than what we have. All right, oh, thank can, you. Can I, let me just corroborate yeah, something. For 10 seconds before we get to 10 me. seconds. I really accept there's some there's, there's something I want to say. If you look at what uh, Mr. Samuel said, it's very true. Yes. Because in our country, there's no meritocracy, a lot of mediocrity. There's somebody who just leave ENS, a fresh student from ENS, after, after working for three years. And they see somebody like Mr. Samuel who have worked for more than 10 years. Mm. And the person is uh, a, 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 a vice principal. Do you think that that will motivate the senior, the, the senior, the senior colleague 
So there are things that I think that if our gov governance system also think of the issue of meritocracy, it will also help because mediocre mediocrity is the one creating all these things. All right. Yes. Thank you. We'll, we'll go straight away to the next issue. We will not take any break. Let's just go straight away. And now the government of Cameroon has set June 1st as an indicative date for schools to resume amid the coronavirus. Schools have been shut and now there are plans on the way to reopen these schools on June uh, the 1st. But now how possible uh, can it be for schools to reopen, especially as the coronavirus cases in the country keep increasing day by day? Let's meet our panel to discuss this. Uh, we've got two educationists in the, in the, yeah. on the panel, so they'll certainly tell us more about this. Let me start with you, Dr. Busi. You had the last word, but I want you to continue on this. Uh, there are prospects for schools to resume on the 1st of June, depending, I should stress, on the evolution of the, of the pandemic in the country but the way you see the, the cases increasing do you see the possibility of feasibility of this happening uh, schools reopening i mean i think that our government have to be watchful the dreadful nature of this pandemic is not an easy one it has lavish the economy to be down and every the lifestyle of people so what i'm observing i'm observing the situation critically because us in the university we are doing a kind of uh, virtual learning. Yes. And I want to say that the university is a higher institution. And if students at the level of the university cannot, most of them do not understand all these virtual means with teachers. We are struggling. We are using all the, uh, the Google Classroom, even WhatsApp, and other, and Zoom. Mm -hmm. It is very difficult because most of our students are even some are even in the suburbs. The network system is poor, yes. and most teachers have not been educated on this new te technology of teaching. So the classroom so is better. I feel that government have to spend a lot on education. That is the truth. Government have to spend a lot. We need a lot of material spending in our educational system and equipment to see that we can meet up and i feel that when you look at the virtual learning government needs to subsidize everything and provide and provide the university with software and wireless system okay, you're talking now that the you're, and, you're saying and now in, the, in the second with secondary schools right so what i'm trying to say is that uh, is that the virtual system the virtual system uh, the virtual system as for now is complex all right because now, ask, we don't have you. a lot of edu we're not prepared for it so are you ready to resume on june 1st psychologically let's observe the situation and i feel that by june 1st if we observe the count the situation in cameroon and the situation in other countries we can give a trial. Mm -hmm. We can give a trial because I think that our children also need to go to school because we see that our children back home have engaged into a lot of deviant behavior. And some already, most of them already have the anxiety to go back to school. And the teaching learning procedure through the, uh, through the television is not the best because not every household has a television. Yes. Not every household can manage uh, the the virtual system not every child can afford even for 100 pounds to put a megabyte to go online for learning so we need we think we feel that the hybrid learning is the best okay. i think that this uh, pandemic by the end when the, when this pandemic will end i feel that our educational system our governance system need to spend a lot in uh, in education so that we can Still blend that. So that we can blend, we can bring a kind of blended learning because this virtual learning also is good, but we need a lot of money to spend, a lot of resources for people to understand uh, such learning technologies. Mm -hmm. So I feel that uh, psychologically, looking at this, if government provides a lot of psychosocial support, okay. I feel that the face-to-face the -face learning, we can give it a trial. All right. But still, while observing the How situation. Uh, uh, Mr. Jumo Siri now. The government today has released some measures, of course, it, even though contradictory by saying bars should open but observe social distancing, taxi drivers should have their normal numbers, which of course uh, co uh, uh, of course, contradicts the concept of social distancing. So with this, uh, would you see schools reopening on June the 1st since the issue of social distancing is very mo does not very much seem to be an issue again? The answer is no. No, no, because uh, you see, uh, the government measures of today, all the measures that, you, that we read, just understand that it is a way 
One, to help the people meet up with end needs, what they have failed to, to provide. Two, it is a way again to permit that their little gumbo sources that they have created in the informal sector should come in because it's getting dry. That is a two framework under which you can best understand the motive that pushed the government to take the decision. Now, for the school resumption, what is the essence of school if we cannot cope? If we cannot create coping mechanism during crisis? At the moment that we are expecting medical doctors to provide us a solution for what they have been come, I remember all the time that I've been calling people doctor and they forced me to call them and I'm expecting them now to provide me a solution for the COVID-19. I have not seen it. It is a man of God in Douala that is calling that he has discovered the medicine which nobody has confirmed yet. What am I trying to say here? We need to rethink what we call education and what we put in it. Yes. Most lecturers, teachers, we go on air and start shouting that it is a student that are facing challenges. I'm telling that I know lecturer that cannot yes. manipulate that a smartphone. Whose fault? <laughs> so there is a lot to put in the basket before we start thinking of June the first. Okay. And somebody earlier echoed it on the platform. This is an unprecedented opportunity for us to move on the trajectory, yeah. to improve a bit on our ways. But how will you do? You cannot squeeze rock and expect water. Okay. That is just what I can say about this. Uh, Mr. Sama, when you look at the preparations at the level of the different ministries of education to slowly uh, but surely resume schools, uh, what do you make of them? Because like the delegations, the regional delegations for secondary education for the northwest and southwest regions, the two, they're coming up, they've been sending memos to principals and school heads to send in details and invoice of examination classes and to see that if schools resume, 24 students per classroom and so on and so forth. Y your thoughts? Yeah, I think that uh, without, without making this government look so helpless in the face of, of their own uh, errors and mistakes. I think that the move by the Minister for Secondary Education and I think Higher Education so far, or the Education Department so far, uh, are, are good and they are, at least for once, the government is trying to be proactive. They don't need to wait until when things normalize before they before they like uh, think of reopening. So they are trying to be proactive, and that is why, uh, as true as you said earlier, it's that if things do not get worse, then we are thinking that by June 1st would be safe enough for us to resume. But understand with me that, and that is one of the recommendations I gave, I was sitting there where Cyril is, on a Saturday platform with uh, Mr. Mufo Josh, and I said, every good teacher ought to have covered between 65 and 70 percent of your work by the end of the second term. Yes. And as as a worst case remedy, we can evaluate and promote for the intermediate classes on the basis of their performance in the first term and the second term while schools reopen only exclusively for those in end of course examination classes which is what the government i want to think that uh agents of the government listened to high tv on that day mm -hmm. and took that recommendation which we made on this on the platform of press, uh, forum. press forum so i think that it's it's uh, it is an act of proactivity that if things stabilize or or if things stay the way they are and they do not get washed out of control, then we shall have only exemption classes come back to school, do a certain degree of learning, and we prepare them for their end of course exams, which is not bad, which to me is good. Our, our only prayer now, because, again, as I said, the key is not in the hands of the government. The government on its own by itself does not have what it takes to combat this. If Cameroonians can be responsible enough, mm -hmm. respect instructions, do the needful, avoid overcrowding and avoid and try to fight against community uh, contamination. I think that it is possible that by June 1st, everything being equal, God being on our side, mm -hmm. 
we can have school resumption, selective school resumption yeah. only for examination classes so that we can permit them. Because life will continue after COVID. And how do we prepare for that continuity of life after COVID? Before we go, I just want you to have the little things that we can do. Your last word now. Um, some countries like Madagascar are already having their schools operate. Uh, operational schools, children are going to school and all that. Other countries are easing restrictions placed on learning and schools. Uh, do you think Cameroon is merely copying or truthfully they are seeking to reopen the country in all genuineness? And permit me also tell you that there are other countries that have not yet taken the decision that yeah. we have taken. And, and so why don't you also think that other countries are also copying from us or <laughs> would eventually copy from us? Right. We are not always very bad in as much as the regime is a bad one. But okay. uh, God being on our side, uh, others too can learn from us. Your last words? Uh, my last word is that uh, I feel that uh, psychologically from what I've observed, the government is trying because this dreadful pandemic was not something that uh, ev the count all countries in the world expected. So I feel that this pandemic should help us shape our governance system. This pandemic should help us shape our health sector. This pandemic should help us shape our educational sector. This pandemic should help us shape our economy. So it should be a lesson for our governance system. And I feel that for education, for school to start in June, we, sh we need a lot of obse observation. All right. Mr. Jose, you very fast. Just two things. One, the, the men in uniform should discipline themselves. They should be responsible enough to help the population cater for themselves. Two, stay safe, stay home, and uh, muzzle your brain. Powerful message today. Thank you all for being part of the program. And to you, our viewers, we say thank you for staying with us. You can always connect with me anytime on social media. On Twitter, I'm at Paul underscore Tweet News. And on Facebook, I use the handle Ponje. From me and the rest of the team, we say thank you for the privilege of your company. And remember, coronavirus is real, so always wash your hands and be sure to practice social distancing because that's what's going to keep us safe. Have yourselves a great evening.